Hello everyone, myself Vinay Kumar. I am actually pursuing PhD in Physics. So in this particular YouTube channel, I will be teaching Physics, Chemistry and Mathematics starting from 8th standard till 12th standard. So if you want to learn Physics, Chemistry and Mathematics, then please do subscribe to my channel. So in my previous video, I was actually explaining the 12th chapter of 8th standard science subject, that is some natural phenomena. In this particular video, I will be explaining the exercise part which was left out in this particular chapter, that is some natural phenomena. So let us go on solving the exercise questions. So coming to the first and second question in this particular exercise, they have asked a question and they have given a set of options for it. So you have to choose a correct option. So in this first question, they have actually asked in this below our options, which one cannot be charged through friction. So the correct option for this will be option B, copper rod, because copper rod is basically a conductor, a good conductor. So, if you look at the other options like A, C and D, they have given only the insulators like plastic, woolen cloth and they have also given an inflated balloon. These are all actually bad conductors. So, if you are trying to charge these bad conductors using friction, using frictional force, then these bad conductors can acquire charges on them. But for a conductor, if you try to charge, that conductor will easily conduct the charges which it gets on it. You cannot accumulate charges on copper rod or on any good conductors through friction. So only through friction, you cannot actually acquire charges on conductors. So here they have asked through friction. So that's why the correct option like copper rod will be the correct option because copper rod cannot acquire charges through friction because it is a good conductor. Coming to the second question, here they have given when a glass rod is rubbed with a silk cloth, then what happens? The glass rod actually becomes positively charged and the cloth will lose its positive charges to the glass rod. Hence, the cloth will become negatively charged. So that's why the correct option for this second question will be option B, where glass rod will be positively charged, like glass rod will be positively charged. Whereas silk cloth, the cloth which you use to rub this particular glass rod, so that is silk cloth will get negatively charged. So for this correct option will be option B. So second question answer is option B. So coming to the third question in this particular exercise, they have actually asked true or false. So coming to the first question in this particular true or false, that is A question, they have actually asked like charges will attract each other. But it is actually not the case. Why? Because always unlike charges attract each other. Like if you have positive charge and negative charge, then they can attract. But if you have positive positive charge or negative negative charge, then they cannot attract each other. So like charges will never attract each other, but they have given like charges will attract each other. So the uh, answer for this first question will be false. Coming to the B question, they have actually mentioned that glass rod and a plastic straw, which has got charges on it, will attract each other. Actually glass rod when it is rubbed with any kind of cloth or a silk cloth for example, then it will acquire positive charge. Whereas the straw, plastic straw will actually acquire negative charge on it. So if glass rod is positively charged and a plastic straw is negatively charged, then there will be positive and negative charge which is unlike charges and hence they will attract each other. Hence here glass rod and plastic straw will attract each other. So they have also given the same statement. So the answer for B question will be true. Coming to the C question of this particular true or false, there they have actually given lightning conductor cannot protect the building from lightning. It is actually false. Why? Because the lightning conductor which is actually placed above the building will be actually connected to the earth. So what whenever the lightning strikes on this particular building, then this particular lightning conductor will absorb the charges which is actually present in that particular lightning and it will actually send that charges to earth so that there will be an earthing effect. So here actually the building and the surrounding of that particular building is actually protected by this lightning conductor. But they have given here that this lightning uh, conductor cannot actually absorb this lightning. So it is actually false. So the answer for C question will be false. Earthquakes can be predicted in advance. This is actually the fourth question in this particular third question. It is actually false. Why? Because 
how much ever technologies we have in this particular uh, generation still we cannot actually predict earthquakes even we have some seismographs but we cannot predict earthquake properly at which place and at which time that particular earthquake will happen so here earthquake cannot be predicted but they have given we can predict the earthquake so the answer for d question will be false so coming to the fourth question they have actually asked sometimes in winter season when you remove the sweater there will be some kind of crackling sounds coming from that particular sweater when you actually remove the sweater from your body that is because in winter season the moisture content will be very less and your body will be having less moisture con uh, content hence when you wear a sweater on your body there will be a natural friction generated in between the body the skin of your body and the sweater which you have worn that will actually generate some amount of charge accumulation on that particular sweater so whenever you are trying to remove that particular sweater then the the charges which was actually present on the sweater when they actually came into contact with the skin so at that particular time the charges will actually flow through your skin so that's why you will get a little amount of electric shock and also some kind of crackling sound so the charges which has got accumulated on this sweater is not harmful there are very minute charges which has got accumulated on sweater just because of the friction which has got generated between the body skin and the sweater hence that charges will be responsible for the crackling sound while removing the sweater from your body coming to the fifth question we have to explain why a charged body loses its charges when we actually touch that particular body with our hands just because human body so we are all human beings so our body is actually a very good conductor so human body is actually good conductor hence when you actually touch that particular charged body with your hands since human body is a good conductor your body will receive charges which was there on this particular charged body hence this charged body will easily lose its charges through human body to the earth so that's why the charge which was there on that particular charged body will be lost when you actually touch that particular charged body because those charges will flow through your body and it will actually enter the earth surface so coming to the sixth question they have actually asked for a name of a device which can actually measure the intensity of earthquake so that particular device is known as richter scale so this richter scale actually measures how much intense the earthquake was so here they have given a situation where there is a three reading on this particular richter scale is this three is a destructive energy does this three reading on richter scale that much amount of earthquake will cause any damage or not because here this particular three or this particular magnitude three which is actually measured on richter scale due to a small earthquake will not cause much damage because only earthquakes with intensity which is measured to be 6 to 7 magnitude or more than 6 to 7 magnitude then only that particular earthquake that particular magnitude which has got measured on this richter scale have an higher intensity that will actually cause lot of damage so any earthquake to cause damage to the earth to the buildings which has got built on this particular earth then the magnitude of that particular earthquake should be either between 6 or 7 or more than 7 so then only it will be much more destructive energy so if a magnitude on a richter scale is 2 and a magnitude on richter scale is 4 then you might think there is just an increase of two factor here but here actually in this particular richter scale the optimization of this particular magnitude is different so if there is two factor increase in the in the magnitude of the earthquake then it shows 1000 times more destructive energy so here if 2 is one particular earthquake's intensity and 4 is another earthquake's intensity then this 4 like the earthquake which has four intensity like four magnitude on richter scale will have 1000 times more destructive energy than this two two magnitude earthquake and here they have actually given 3 as the magnitude reading like 3 as the magnitude reading on richter scale here for earthquake to be more destructive it should actually be more than 6 or 7 on the richter scale like the magnitude of that particular the magnitude of the intensity of that particular earthquake should be more than 7 
then only the earthquake will be much more destructive so this all explanation you can actually give for the sixth question so coming to the seventh question they have actually asked three measures to protect ourselves from lightning actually you can give multiple measures which you can follow while lightning while lightning is happening but here i will actually mention three measures you can look for more also so one particular measure which you can take is that close yourself inside a building so close yourself inside a building so you should actually stay inside a building or the other measure which you can take at this particular uh, lightning time is that you can actually sit inside a vehicle and close all the windows of the vehicle so sit inside vehicle close all windows of that particular vehicle close windows so this is another measure which you can take when lightning is happening because closing windows is very important because only when you close window the charges will flow through the outer surface of the vehicle and it will reach the earth and the person who is sitting inside that particular vehicle will actually not get affected by the charges which is present in that particular lightning so here you should actually go inside a building and you should actually sit inside a building or you should sit inside a vehicle and close windows if you find no building or no vehicles near you then go to open space so you should actually sit down in an open field so sit down in open field so while sitting down you should actually cover your head and neck part so cover your head so only when you cover your head and sit down you should actually sit down you should not stand up because when you stand it will be like more prone like your human body will be more prone to attract lightning so that's why you should actually sit down and you should cover the top part of your head so you should actually bow down and you should actually cover your head with your hands so cover your head so you should sit in a open field you should not uh, stand under a tree or you should not uh, stand under any other objects you should just go to a open place and sit down and cover your head so this is one of the measure you can take so i have mentioned three measures you can go on mentioning more and more measures which you can follow during lightning so coming to the eighth question they have actually asked the reason for two charged balloons repelling each other and a charged balloon attracting an uncharged balloon here actually when a charged balloon is charged then both the two balloons will attract same charges so both the two balloons will attract same charges so same charges means they are like charges so i as i told in my previous video and also in this particular video like charges will never attract each other like charges or same charges which has got accumulated on these two balloons will repel each other because like charges repels only unlike charges attracts so both are same uh, both the balloons are made of made of same material so they will actually acquire same kind of charges so when like charges are there on two particular bodies then they will actually repel each other but in second case actually charged balloon actually attracts uncharged balloon because uncharged balloon will be not having any kind of charge so uncharged body will always attract a charged body uncharged body or charged body attracts uncharged body actually the reverse is correct because charged body has some charges on it and that will be responsible for the attraction of an uncharged body so hence charged body attracts uncharged body this is actually the reason for why a charged balloon will attract an uncharged balloon only when there is charge on one particular body then only it can attract other body which has no charges on it but if both the bodies have like charges they will repel and if both the bodies have unlike charges then they will attract each other and one more point is that charged body will always attract uncharged body irrespective of charges present on it so coming to the ninth question they have actually asked the name of an instrument which is actually responsible to detect the charged which charge which is present on a particular body so the name of that particular instrument is electroscope so if you refer my previous video for this electroscope you can actually find the explanation for how electroscope works and i have drawn a simple diagram for a simple electroscope and i have actually explained an electroscope and how a charged body can actually detect an uncharged or charge on another particular body an electroscope is an instrument which actually finds out the body whether it is charged or not so for this explanation you can actually refer my previous video 
so coming to the 10th question they have asked to list out three states name in our country where earthquakes are more prone to happen here actually if you refer my previous video i have actually explained about seismic zone or a fault zone there actually the earth plates where the earth plates actually meet each other so at that particular point there will be a slight vibrations happening whenever this particular earth plates will actually have some kind of brush to each other so wherever this junction of these two earth plates meeting each other will be there so at that particular position more and more earthquakes will be happening so that particular zones are known as fault zones and in that particular fault zones will be more prone to earthquake so jammu and kashmir gujarat and assam these three states we can give as an example because some kind of earth plates like some kind of fault zones are actually there in jammu and kashmir in gujarat and also in assam so that's why in these three states more earthquakes will be happening so coming to the 11th question they have actually asked what you will do like what measures you will take when you are outdoor and an earthquake strikes so when the earthquake is happening you are actually outdoor like you are outside your house so at that particular time what precautions you will take to protect yourself so the first precaution which you should actually take at that particular time is that you should actually lie down on an open field so you should actually lie down on an open field so you should see through that there is no tall buildings there is no overhead power line which is passing on your head and you should see there is no other metal objects or any kind of objects near you so that when earthquake strikes that can, that should not fall on your head so you should find that kind of clear spot that kind of clear open field and you should actually lie down you should not stand up you should actually lie down on that particular open field so when you are outdoors and if you are inside a car or a bus then you should actually travel slowly on a open space where there is less risk of buildings falling on that particular vehicles so at that particular point you should just stand your vehicle in that particular open space and you should not come outside that particular vehicle you should stay inside till that tremors or till that earthquake vibrations are there like this you can actually list out more measures which you can take during earthquake so coming to the 12th question they have actually asked weather report has given that there will be a likely a thunderstorm occurring in your city and you are actually going outside your house like do you actually carry umbrella with you in that particular thunderstorm so the better idea during the thunderstorm will be to stay inside house but still if you have an emergency and you should actually move out of your house to a particular place then carrying an umbrella with you is not a good idea why because if you actually carry umbrella with you umbrella will be having a metal part which is actually stuck to that umbrella so that metal might be more prone in absorbing lightning on you because when you have thunderstorm there will be a lot of lightning will be there why because thunderstorm will create air currents to move upwards and because air currents moving upwards the water droplets which is actually present in that particular cloud will move downwards so when there is like constant upward and downward movement of air current and water droplets there will be charge separation in cloud and when two charged clouds meet each other then there will be a larger lightning which can take place so if you actually carry an umbrella then your umbrella can be a source for lightning to strike to so that's why carrying an umbrella at that particular thunderstorm is not a good idea so better idea is that you should actually go inside a building and close yourself inside a building or you should sit inside a vehicle and close all the windows or better idea is not to leave your house at that particular thunderstorm time so this is all there in this particular video i have given explanation for all 12 questions which was there in this particular chapter some natural phenomena so like this i'll be explaining more and more physics chemistry and mathematics chapters starting from 8th standard till 12th standard in this particular youtube channel so if you want to learn physics chemistry and mathematics then please do subscribe to my channel and stay tuned with my channel thank you